This is Chris Duncan in Lubbock, Texas. I'm the founder of Find Your Focus Photographic Education. And today we're going to take a quick look at Nick Software's new product, HDR Effects Pro 2. We've got some images here that we shot last year in Yosemite at our Find Your Focus experience. And we're about to be going again. So any of you that shoot architectural, interiors, landscapes, anything that has a high contrast range or that dynamic range of highlight the shadow across your image, then HDR is, is, a, is a great way to go. Um, saves you some time with complicated lighting setups and exposure control and stuff like that. So I'm just going to do an image here and show you some of the features of HDR effects, um, the way I like to use it, and hopefully you'll find this helpful with this program. While these are opening here, I'm just going to select all three out of Bridge. I primarily work in Aperture, but I'm showing you out of Photoshop. We're just going to right click and go to Merge to HDR Effects Pro 2. And while this is loading, it's going to give me a dialog box pop up here. And while I'm talking about this, is you can visit the NIC website at nicksoftware.com. And what that will allow you to do is you can download all their software for free. We're going to have other videos on their other products like Viveza, Silver Effects Pro, Color Effects Pro, um, and uh, of course HDR Effects Pro that will work in here. So when you see that HDR Effects 2, what it does is it opens up our three exposures, our four, two, however many exposures that you have. So before you even get to the program, let's talk a little bit about HDR. What you're going to want to do with HDR is you're going to take a series of exposures, usually about a stop to one and a half stops difference between each one, so you get all your detail in your shadows and all the details in your highlights. And the software will actually grab those images, read the exposure values of all those images, and create a merged image that has all of that exposure data from all three images in it. That's what makes this piece of software so incredible. Think if you're putting three images on top of each other, so all that data from brightest highlight to, dark, to the deepest shadow is still intact. Now when you're working with a single image, you may only have like a six stop range of data to use when you're shooting RAW. When you shoot HDR, you have that full range. So if you took three exposures as we did here, you know, I've got about a 12 stop range that I can work with and I could do more exposures if I needed it. This case did not call for it. So you see here we're on this dialog screen and I've got my three images up here at the top and then my preview window. A couple things to look at. There's all, there's could be um, some motion due to wind, ghosting that happens in an HDR image, especially if you're not on a tripod, and also some chromatic aberration, which is in areas of high contrast. So I just want to check these images real fast, see if I have any of those issues. And you can see I'm going to move right here, and I'm going to look up here around the trees. Did these trees ghost any? And they look pretty good to me. Now I'm going to. If you see at the top, this middle one is my ghost reference image. I'm going to click on this one. And what this does is this, it's which image is it going to use the data from for your ghosting? So I'm going to see if there's any ghosting that I have problems with. And I don't think so. So I'm going to go back with the, the center one. And this slider here does not affect your merged image. It just gives you ability to see details differently in each previewed image. It's not going to affect your uh, it's not going to affect your output. See I've got a little bit of chromatic aberration right there that, along the hard contrast so I'm just going to adjust that just slightly and I can always come back to this box if I need to so I'm going to go ahead and hit this create HDR button the software is going to begin putting these images together and balancing my exposures. Okay this is just right out of the can not too bad it's a little bright for me and we're going to do, I'm going to show you the interface here, and we're going to work on this some. Over to the left of the interface is you see all these presets that, that the engineers at Nick have come up with. Um, from really grungy and, and stuff to more realistic and balanced type HDRs. Okay, black and whites, um, lots of different effects. You can also create your own presets. If you, don't like, if you don't like any of these or you want to adjust some of these, you can save them as your own. Well, I'm just going to go back to the default, and that's where I'm going to start here. Also on the left side, you'll see this place for our custom ones if we want to do that, any imported. And we also have a history. The history is very important 
that's where you can go back. I can see that one preset I put on there just a few seconds ago. Go back to our default. Or if I need to go back and change some ghosting or some aberration issues in that first merge dialog box, you see that right here. You can come back to this point and I can make those adjustments if I need to. Okay. Obviously the middle is our preview window. We can do a split and a side-by-side -side comparison. I like to work in the main window first and then go back and do a compare later just to make sure I'm happy with where I'm at. Okay, on the, on the right-hand side are all of our tools. And, and you want to work this software. Nick has designed this software in order progression. So the top down is the way we want to work. We don't want to come down here and start adjusting our levels and curves before we adjust our tone compression. So I'm just going to slide this around. What tone compression does is it's going to lighten the highlights and brighten the shadows kind of at the same time. And you can play, play with this until where you, till you feel it suits your needs. I don't usually like to go too far to one end or the other, but you can see as we go all the way to this negative, I'm at my brightest image. And if I go all the way to the end, I'm getting my darkest details out. You can see that really come through in the mountain there. So I'm going to bring it, I usually bring it up a little bit. I'm going to do about right there. Okay, that's my tone compression. I'm not going to mess with that much on this image. Then we have our method strength. Method strengths are all these HDR methods you see down here. Depth, detail, and drama. Your depth goes from off to strong. I'm going to keep this one at normal. Your detail goes to a soft detail what they call a realistic, an accentuated detail, very detailed. You can see the big difference just between accentuated and detailed. And then what they have, grungy. And for this, I'm more of a simpleton on some of these. I'm going to go with accentuated. And then drama goes from flat to natural to deep, dingy, sharp, and grainy. And I really like the deep. One thing you want to be aware of, when you start changing these, you'll start seeing haloing effects depending on your image. It's really bad in this upper left-hand corner around that tree when I go too high. So I'm going to keep it about deep. Okay, so that's it. That's with my tone compression part. Now we get to the tonality. It's your exposure and contrast and black and white controls, highlight and shadow controls. It's a little bright for my taste. I'm going to bring that exposure down a little bit. And the shadow slider is really nice. I can brighten or deepen those shadows. And I think it opened it up just a bit for my taste. And then I'm going to soften these highlights just a little bit. And now we get into some contrast. I, I love high contrast images, so I'm going to give this thing some contrast. I want my eye going down this creek and up to that mountain and not getting lost in anything else that's going to pull my eye away. So I'm kind of creating that effect with the contrast slider. Then we have blacks and whites. This is going to increase the intensity of our blacks and our whites. Some further contrast tonality controls right here. And then, of course, structure. Structure is going to add that detail to your image. What structure does is it, if it actually will kind of sharpen the pixels between edges. So it's not, a, it's not an edge sharpening. So you can see how I bring this structure up, and it pulls that detail out of that mountain. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this at neutral because I'm going to use Nick's awesome technology, their U-point technology, uh, without masking where I can drop a control point and adjust the structure just in places I want to do that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the structure for that. Saturation, obviously that's our color saturation. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And then temperature, this is a great new feature in HDR FX Pro 2 is that I now have a white balance and temperature control. And I'm going to give this just a little bit of warmth right there and maybe take out a little bit of that green. And now I get to one of my favorite parts about Nick's software and what makes it, in my opinion, superior to other software like this. Before, anytime we did an image like this, what we had to do is you had to do your HDR, then you had to save it, and then you'd have to open it up to do finishing. Well, with control points and all these finishing techniques, I can do it all in one interface. So I'm going to drop a control point right here on that mountain, that big granite rock in Yosemite there, and bring the brightness of it down just a little bit. Contrast up. 
And this is where I want to pull out the structure. I want to pull out the detail just in this mountain here. And I can click here and you can see without masking, this is the area it's affected. No complicated layer masking, brushing and erasing, any of that. And as I make my circle of influence go bigger or smaller, you can see how it changes those pixels. It's very, very precise. They've done a great job on this. I'm going to give that a little more structure. Bring the brightness down just a little bit. Right there. And then I'm going to take these trees and another, I'm sorry, the sky, add another control point in the sky. I always like to give my sky some contrast. You can see right here, I can click this on the right hand side, sorry. And you can see that influence right there that it's affecting on the sky. So I want to make sure it gets all of that blue sky right there and add some contrast in there and maybe saturate, get that a little bit more of a blue sky. And that's all I'm going to do with control points in this image. I think the, the rest of it looks really, really sharp. Um, graduated density filter, if I need that, I don't think I need that on this image. I'm going to put a little vignette. HDRs tend to look a little bit flat. So I'm just going to put a quick little vignette on there. Bring your eyes, center attention right into that beautiful granite piece there. And then if I need to do levels and curves, I have that option too to put a, maybe a nice S curve on this. to Just give it a little more of that contrasty detail, depth that I like. And then we click OK. But you know, I kind of like this set. I think this is a good set. I could use this for other images from this trip. And so I'm going to go over here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, to custom and hit this plus. And all these things I just did, minus the control points, the global adjustments that I made are saved. So I'm just going to call this Yosemite HDR. And click OK. And now you can see that that preset is saved. And next time I've load an image, I can click that and all these global adjustments, tone compression, my HDR methods, all these tonality color controls will be there. And I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to put that together and it's going to save it back on my desktop as a separate layer in Photoshop. So if I want to do blend modes or opacity changes, I have the option to do that. So anyway, I hope this helps. I hope you... Uh, Look, give Nick Software a look. It's nicksoftware.com. If you do any type of high dynamic range images, HDR Effects Pro 2 is definitely something you ought to check out. You can also get a promo code. Uh, you can download the free trial and if you like it. You can save 15% by using promo code CJDuncan. Once again, this is Chris Duncan. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.